I would like to discuss primary and secondary amenorrhea with you. This is often tested on the USMLE, so pay close attention. Let's review what a normal menstrual cycle is like. It's between 21 and 35 days. There is another lecture about AUB if you'd like to find out more. I'd like to discuss the terminology that we use. Oligomenorrhea means periods that are greater than every 35 days apart. It can also mean less than nine menstrual cycles per year. Polymenorrhea is different. It actually means that your periods come too frequently. There are less than 21 days in the intermenstrual bleeding. Menorrhagia means you have too much flow, greater than 80 milliliters in seven days. Metrorrhagia means that you have irregular bleeding between menses. And amenorrhea means no menses that can be either primary or secondary. And we'll find out more in just a second. Remember, if you'd like to know the new terminology, please refer to the AUB lecture. So this is an overview of the hypothalamic pituitary axis. Now, depending on what the target organ is, there are different hormones that come from the pituitary, as you see here. There are different hormones, or gonadotropins, or tropic hormones, that come from the anterior pituitary and the posterior pituitary. And they have different effects on the target organ. All of these systems may have a role in normal menstrual cyclicity. You can see here the target end organ hormone production is definitely influenced by the anterior pituitary and the hypothalamus. Let's review primary amenorrhea. In primary amenorrhea, you have never had a menstrual cycle. This is pathologic if you are age 13 and have no secondary sexual characteristics. To remind you, breasts, axillary, and pubic hair are all secondary sexual characteristics. By age 15, even if you have secondary sexual characteristics, if you have no menses, this is pathologic. Again, it's very important to remember that the HPO axis must be intact for a young woman to have a menstrual cycle. If she has amenorrhea, something has gone wrong at the level of the HPO axis. It could be the environment that is feeding back information into the CNS. The CNS then, obviously, corresponds to the hypothalamus. The hypothalamus has to release gonadotropin-releasing hormone to the anterior pituitary. The anterior pituitary will release gonadotropins, FSH, follicle-stimulating hormone, and luteinizing hormone, or LH, to the ovary. The ovary then produces estrogen and progesterone. The uterus is influenced by estrogen and progesterone, and the withdrawal of both of those hormones result in a menstrual cycle. Let's now go over the common causes that we see in primary amenorrhea. If you have a patient that has breast development, you should consider that their cause of primary amenorrhea may be malarianagenesis. There is a separate talk on malarianagenesis, or variants, in another lecture if you'd like more information. Also, androgen sensitivity can also present as primary amenorrhea. There is another lecture set where you can learn more about complete and partial androgen sensitivity. Also, women may have anatomic factors that actually prevent menses. One of those is a vaginal septum. They may also have an imperforate hymen, or they may overall have constitutional delay. If you have no breast development, likely you're, you will have a high FSH, or follicle-stimulating hormone. This can happen in normal genetic females, such as 46XX. It can also happen in 46XY individuals. Let's also now talk about low FSH. You can typically have a low FSH with constitutional delay. This also happens with prolactinomas and Kalman syndrome. You may get tested about Kalman so syndrome, so I will spend a little time here. These patients usually have anosmia, which means they cannot smell. They usually have primary amenorrhea and will need assistance to become pregnant should they like to become pregnant in the future. Other CNS pathology can also lead to a low FSH. Stress, weight loss, and anorexia is typical to have a low FSH associated with it. 
Polycystic ovarian syndrome can also have a normal to low FSH. And again, congenital adrenal hyperplasia may have a low FSH as well. If you'd like to learn more about CAH, or congenital adrenal hyperplasia, there is a separate lecture set for that. I want to bring your attention to a really quick mnemonic to remember the causes of primary amenorrhea. When I was a medical student, it was difficult for me to remember, but I'm gonna give you a quick tip on how you can remember it. Remember Xmas. X is for 45XO, or monosomy, associated with Turner syndrome. M is for malarian agenesis. Recall that there is another lecture about malarian agenesis that you can review. A is for androgen insensitivity syndrome. This is typical with complete androgen insensitivity syndrome. Again, you can review this in another lecture set. Lastly, S is for Swire syndrome. This is also referred to as XY gonadal dysgenesis. <laughs>